Hello and welcome to the Dino Saw for week 25, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. So let's crack on. Uh, the first one is about that sentient AI from Google that you probably heard about in the news, it was on all of the social medias uh, and that is almost half the problem. So if you don't know what this story is uh, then uh, a researcher or engineer at Google uh, was put on administrative leave uh, during the week, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, something like that, um, because he'd gone public on his blog that the, the bot that he had been dealing with, which is uh, Google's Lambda, essentially chatbot, uh, become sentient. It had a soul. And this was due to his many, many interactions with this, this algorithm. Um, and therefore, it was very frightening, and the world needed to be told about this. Uh, if you then speak to all the experts, they'll go, oh, right, it's just a chatbot. What's really going on here is that people have lost the ability to know when they're being hoodwinked by a computer, and that's the scary thing, not the fact that a, uh, a computer might have sentience, which, by the way, it does not. So. Um, obviously the press picked it up, which is also most of the problem. So we've been fed a narrative through many, many years that computers uh, are sentient, they have a soul, they understand us, they're going to take over one day, we won't be able to perceive the difference. Only the last bit is true, we can't perceive the difference and that's what's going on. So um, we've seen you know, chatbots going back to the 1960s, 1965 I think was the first one, so Elisa. Um, and if you go and research that, it's really, really, really crude, but people wanted to believe that it had some sort Sort of soul or it had some sort of uh, sentience. Um, it did not and it still does not. So uh, just be wary of stories like this. It's really more about humankind not knowing when we're being hoodwinked by computers and that should be the more scary thing. There you go. Uh, talk about scary things. Uh, this is one of those uh, robot killing dogs. There are many of them out there. Boston Dynamics have one, uh, although, you know, obviously put to different uses. Um, but there are many of them out there. Um, you know, other robot killing dogs are available, etc. Um, so this one uh, is actually by Ghost Robotics. Their, their clientele are more sort of governmental, uh, for instance, uh, Homeland Security in America, patrolling uh, borders uh, in Mexico, for instance. Um, and if you're in an inhospitable place, uh, a desert, for instance, then you probably need a robot rather than anything else. So this is what this is. It has attachments. Uh, yes, you've probably seen these with guns on. Yes, you've probably seen them running at 60 miles an hour and doing backflips and all sorts of things and parkour. And now they're swimming. So uh, this has what's called the Nort, uh, which is the Nautical Autonomous Unmanned Tail, uh, which has been developed by Onyx Industries. Uh, and you sort of clip it on at the bottom and it can just jump into water and swim. There you go. It's all waterproof and all that sort of thing. So um, I guess the uh, your, your, your options for running away from one of these things are closing. <laughs> so I don't know what else is left. They'll be flying soon. Of course they will. There you go. Anyway, uh, there you go. If you're interested in that, uh, it can swim. Um, now this is a really interesting concept and also a really interesting research paper and this is a wheel uh, this is going uphill by itself only it sort of isn't uh, this is using uh, a, a phenomenon called non-reciprocity locomotion uh, I did nerd out on this for a little while and I thought I'd better tell everybody about it uh, so um, this is basically um, if you imagine uh, one of the fundamental laws of motion for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so uh, it is a it reciprocates. So what happens to one thing can actually be given back and then there is net zero energy gained in that. So what's actually happening here is if you put uh, those little red circles in there, they are motors all with their own little kind of intelligence in them and they're just spinning in a certain way. Uh, if you connect them all together then they have this sort of uh, system effect, should we call it. So each one of them, because uh, the equal and opposite doesn't really work anymore, because actually one of the parts in that system has its own motion, so it's adding something or taking something out of that equation. So each one of them is spinning on its own. It does not know that it's in a wheel, yet it is acting like a wheel and it is actually creating motion. So these kind of micro parts of a system all doing their own thing independently with very few constraints, for instance a piece of plastic and elastic band um, and some motors, can start to create really really interesting and unexpected motion. So uh, there are apparently walls of these things that can uh, throw things back at you and things that always jump in a certain way. So just thought it was interesting, is this the wheel of the future, i.e. there's no motor, there's no uh, drive shaft, uh, it just is what it is and it just does its motor motion thing. There you go. Uh, wheels, uh, reinventing thereof. Um, 
This is uh, Voice Mods. Voice Mods has been out for a while. It is a voice changing app or a, a thing that you download on your PC. Uh, it's you know it's if you want to do YouTubing or you've got a blog or a vlog and you want to do uh, real time voice changing, it does that for you. Uh, up until now, it's used effects, so uh, modulation, pitch change. It might do low pass filters, you know, all that sort of stuff, echoes. Um, so if you want to sound like you're in a cave, it can do that pretty easily. If it wants to lower or raise your voice, so you want to sound like a god or a child or anything in between, it can do that. Now, uh, this is actually using their new uh, AI versions. So um, you may have seen this uh, a couple of years ago, and this is why I'm reporting on it through systems like Liabird. These were sort of pretty hefty research or, you know, back-end systems that you could change your voice, yet you could train your voice, uh, and it could then parrot out the, the sort of the, the AI version of your voice. Uh, this is interesting for movies where they could recreate people, for instance, uh, and do dialogue. That was all in research land on big, hefty computers. Now you can download it on your PC. I uh, don't think it's available for Mac, unfortunately, but you can download it on your PC and have a go with it. So if you want to sound like Morgan Freeman, they've got a voice actor who sounds like Morgan Freeman. They've uh, analyzed the voice, and now you can change your voice into Morgan Freeman. I thought it was interesting on their website. They've also got a sort of FAQ sort of thing and fairly fairly bold in that is, is this illegal? Uh, of course it's not illegal, but it's very, very close to being manipulated or used by, uh, so let's just say, sort of uh, dark actors out there who are doing some dark and dodgy stuff on the internet. Uh, so if Morgan Freeman phones you up for your credit card details, it's probably not him. Um, really interesting one, I've talked about tokenized payments uh, many times uh, and this is a really good example of it actually working in, in the real world. So uh, this is Roku teaming up with Walmart to do uh, buyable TV. Uh, now we've seen a buyable TV, it probably should come in air quotes quite a lot, but buyable TV uh, could be QR codes or it could just be a download of uh, a web page and go and buy the thing. It has many guises, whereas this one is probably as close as you're going to get at the moment. So when I talk about tokenized payments is your payment details are taken by one merchant where you've done all the security stuff and they are able to give essentially a, uh, um, a secret version of your payments to anybody else just for the purposes of buying stuff. So they, they sort of encrypt your data uh, and that's available to other people. So what's going on here is you've already signed up to Roku, you're using Roku Pay, uh, and or you've been signed up to Roku Pay, they have your details, they have your address. So when you see this advert, you go, I'd like to, I'd like to get that, please. You just press OK on your remote control, and Walmart then get the tokenized payments. They get your address, they get all your credit card details, and, and everything they need to sign off that payment. Uh, it's then authorized with the original person, because you've given them priority to do that, and Walmart then deliver it. So. Um, we've seen sort of you know TV being through um, or at least payment through TV trying to be through websites, URLs, QR codes. So this using tokenized payment is is kind of where uh, the next step is. Um, I recently was uh, presenting at a uh, World Out of Home uh, conference where also suggesting this is a way to buy from billboards as well. So if you had a QR code, you could probably then use a, a unified system that contains your tokens to buy from the billboard directly. So this attribution, buyable instantly, is coming to TV uh, in this way. There you go. Uh, Adobe, uh, specifically Photoshop, uh, have a new neural filter. Uh, neural filters have been out for a fair while now, actually, uh, but they've got a new one, which is called Photo Restoration, and you're seeing it in action in front of you now. So again, uh, a little bit like the voice thing I've just showed you, you've seen stuff like this in research papers possibly only last year and now we're seeing it as a filter in a piece of commercial software. So uh, lots of people want to do this to old photographs. It repairs the cracks, it does the textures for you and it'll even recolor it, etc, uh, etc. Et um, so that's kind of cool. If this is your business retouching old photos, uh, this is a bit of a worry. Um, but other than that, that's interesting. Uh, the th Second thing really about uh, Adobe, which is they're probably going to bring a free version of Adobe Photoshop to the internet. Uh, now, occasionally I use a piece of software called PhotoP, so uh, that's P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A, uh, rather than the other P. Um, but basically what it is, it's kind of Photoshop on the internet and it's free. So um, they're obviously seeing people needing to go into the internet and therefore losing, uh, lose, losing essentially customers there. So they're creating a free version. It's not out there yet, but it probably is coming. There is already a web version, but you need to pay for that like you do with your normal Photoshop subscription, which by the way, uh, Adobe, if anybody's watching this, are fiercely expensive. So a free version is obviously gonna get people into the ecosystem and hopefully they'll upgrade. There you go. So uh, watch out for this and also uh, 
um, free Photoshop on the internet. And finally, we have the war on aimbots, or at least actually this is shots fired in the opposite direction, if you excuse the pun. Uh, this is an aimbot that is trying to be undetected. So if you don't know what an aimbot is, the clue's in the name, it's a bot that aims for you in the game. So if these are headshots, for instance, or shots on certain items, then it can do that for you. Now the way it does it is it looks at the output of your video card, interrogates the game itself, uh, it knows what's going on, uh, and therefore can spoof controls, it can kind of squirt kind of fake left, right, up, down controls from your mouse, whatever, into the system. Now these are detectable because they run on your computer, and there are lots of ways of making sure they are detectable. If you're in a competition, obviously using aimbots is bad. If you get caught cheating, that is like super bad doo-doo on your entire uh, personality, and you probably won't get invited back ever again. So people do use them all the time, uh, especially in the non-competition uh, uh, world, and they are just irritating. However, this one takes a really interesting uh, direction. It takes a webcam, uh, or it can use a webcam just pointing at the screen, so there's no physical connection to the host computer. Uh, what it then does is it interrogates that using the same algorithms, uh, it knows what's going on on the actual game, uh, and then controls a mouse using this four-axis motor thing, uh, your actual physical mouse. So uh, there is no connection with the host computer or Xbox or whatever it is, uh, uh, obviously you won't be using a mouse on an Xbox, however there's no connection to the computer. Um, now, is it? yes, it's undetectable, but you could say, well, the algorithm that's moving that mouse left, right, up and down might have some traits in it that might be detectable, um, but therefore we're going into a, a, a different spiral of the war here, so uh, I thought that would be quite interesting. Um, I thought that was just really neat, uh, really sort of lateral thinking. Um, so well done to Kamal Carter for that one. Uh, that's a really neat uh, use of uh, motors and deviousness. Well done. Uh, hopefully that was interesting. Uh, if you liked it, give us a like. Uh, it really does help if you share it and all that sort of stuff. So um, do appreciate that. Thank you very much. And I will see you next week.